Would you like to improve your memory? Do you find it hard to remember different opening variations, end game techniques, or checkmating patterns? If you don't play chess, don't turn off this video just yet, as what I will talk about will be relevant and applicable to literally any pursuit, from better remembering names to passing your physics exam. Also, don't pour yourself a cup of coffee until you've watched the entire video. This is Dr. Andrew Huberman, an American neuroscientist and tenured professor in the Department of Neurobiology at Stanford University School of Medicine. He has made numerous significant contributions to the field of brain development, brain function, and neural plasticity, which is the ability of a nervous system to rewire and learn new behaviors, skills, and cognitive functioning. But you may know him as the cool science teacher you wish you had at high school. Not only is he an acclaimed scientist, but he is also an expert at effectively communicating extremely complex information to millions of people. Andrew's vast knowledge, childlike curiosity, and good looks have resulted in him having the largest health and fitness podcast in the world. But what does this skateboarder turned scientist have to do with my chess skills? In the last video, you saw my chess journey, where my rating went from 0 to 2000 in less than 2 years. However, what I failed to show you were some of the small and big behavioral tools that got me there. One in particular, which I wanted to talk about today. Let me ask you something. Do you drink coffee? Do you enjoy waking up to the smell of a fresh brew? Do you drink it before studying or attending a boring lecture? Perhaps you drank it before watching this video. What if I told you that by simply changing the timing of when you drink coffee, tea or any other caffeinated beverage, you can become a stronger chess player. Coffee contains caffeine, a compound which does three main things when it enters your body. Reduces fatigue by reducing adenosine, increases alertness by increasing epinephrine release or adrenaline release, I should say, both from the adrenals in your body and from locus ceruleus within the brain. It can, in parallel to all that, increase the action or the efficacy of the action of dopamine. The increase in adrenaline, and crucially, the timing of this increase, may be the key to improving your chest as well as memory in general. Work that was done by the McGaw Laboratory and other laboratories evaluated the precise temporal relationship between neurochemical activation of these pathways and learning and memory. What they did is they had animals and or people, depending on the experiment, take a drug, could be caffeine, something that would increase adrenaline, either an hour before, 30 minutes before, or during the bout of learning, or five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, etc. afterwards. They looked very precisely at when exactly is best to evoke this adrenaline release. And it turns out that the best time window to evoke the release of these chemicals, if the goal is to enhance learning and memory of the material, is either immediately after or just a few minutes, five, 10, maybe 15 minutes after repeating that information. Now, this really spits in the face of the way that most of us approach learning and memory. Most of us, if we use stimulants like caffeine, we're taking those before or during an attempt to learn, not afterwards. According to Dr. Huberman, there are also many reasons why you may benefit from delaying your caffeine intake to up to two hours after waking up. Warning, the following information may be triggering to some coffee consumers. Why would you want to delay your caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking? The answer to that is very simple. Many people wake up in the morning, they drink caffeine within 10, 20, 30, sometimes within two minutes of waking, and they feel more alert, naturally. That makes sense because of the effects of caffeine in blocking the effects of adenosine that I talked about earlier. But then what they find is that in the early afternoon, in particular after lunch, they experience a dramatic dip in their overall levels of energy, the so-called afternoon crash. In most cases, the way they respond to that is to ingest more caffeine, which indeed can increase their levels of mood and alertness. However, there is a problem with ingesting caffeine in the afternoon if it falls within eight or 10 or dare I even say 12 hours of going to sleep. And that is the caffeine ingested in the afternoon for most everybody disrupts the architecture and quality of their nighttime sleep. And I should say that it doesn't necessarily impact their ability to fall asleep and maybe even sleep through the night, but that the depth and quality of that sleep is disrupted by consuming caffeine in the afternoon. In fact, many people find that if they delay their caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking up, that they feel more alert in the morning and they completely avoid that afternoon crash. Here's how I altered my chest training routine with this new knowledge. First, I stopped drinking coffee right after waking up. 
In fact, I tried to wait up to two hours before my first cup of joe. Now I'm sure this may sound daunting to some of you, as it did to me, but delaying your first cup will make it taste that much better. Trust me, you can survive 90 to 120 minutes without coffee. Second, these two hours or so after waking up, I spent studying chess. Some days I studied opening lines, other days I practiced mill games, end games or various chess compositions. I generally tried not to study multiple phases of the game during the same session. If I didn't feel like doing puzzles or memorizing openings, I read chess books, watched YouTube videos or just juggled pieces. After 90 to 120 minutes of chess study, it is finally time for coffee or tea if it's later in the day. If I was feeling extra motivated, I also did 20 push-ups and sometimes even took a cold shower. Let me tell you, that cup of coffee after a bout of learning chess is something magical. It lifts your mood higher than it ever has and boosts your motivation for the rest of the day. Now I did not follow this protocol religiously. Some days my bouts of learning were limited to just 10 minutes of study. In other words, I wasn't chained to any particular regimen. Not drinking coffee and instead studying chess was a conscious choice, which made it that much more rewarding. Now before you start typing in the comments there was merely a placebo, hear me out. Placebo is just as powerful, if not more, than many pharmaceuticals. If placebo was responsible for 90 or even 100% of the success of this protocol, that makes no difference to me. The placebo effect demonstrates the power, the sometimes surprising power of our mindsets, our thoughts, our beliefs, our expectations to produce meaningful changes in the body. Simply taking a sugar pill under the impression that it's a real medication can not just improve your pain and your anxiety and depression, but also reduce your blood pressure, calm your asthma, boost your immune system. Our beliefs are incredibly powerful more powerful than we can even comprehend. If your brain thinks something is worth pursuing, why fight against it? There have certainly been other pharmacological and behavior-based tools that may or may not have helped me with memory, energy and motivation when it comes to learning chess. That being said, I'm a YouTuber, not a doctor, so my testimonial ends here. My recommendation, brew yourself, you know, your favorite cup of coffee, 